。英国牛津大学研发由阿斯特捷利康制药公司合作生产的 A Z 疫苗，因为非盈利的价格优势，成为全球使用最广的新冠肺炎疫苗，也是台湾首支施打的疫苗。远见杂志岳阳专访 A Z 疫苗研发团队，六十五天内就进入临床的疫苗先锋是怎么办到的？ Well, I was watching the news at the very, very first day of 2020 um, because I, for some time, have worked on vaccines against pathogens that can cause outbreaks, and we thought we would start work on the vaccine, and it may never be needed. It might just be an academic project. That would allow us to demonstrate we could start quickly if we needed to, but on the other hand, if it was going to be needed, we had to start straight away and go as fast as we possibly could. Yeah, that was right, wasn't it? I think we, in the middle of January, we were having a conversation, Sarah, saying, "Well, we probably should, you know, let's get started now because it'll take us a couple of weeks for the DNA to arrive and a couple of weeks to get the cells going. And if in a couple of weeks it's gone away, we can just put that in the bin. We don't need to carry on." With it. And by the end of January, the university was taking it very seriously.、Um, we were having weekly meetings across the department with epidemiologists and mathematicians and people that were approaching, you know, how to look at setting up other kinds of trials. Immunologists within the UK, we were responding very fast and able to do that because a lot of colleagues across the university came together to reinforce the. Idea that maybe this was something we should be taking seriously. So by the time February hit, we were really running with this across many levels, really collaboratively though in Oxford. There's no way to know the future, but Sarah's team and AstraZeneca and other vaccine developers are continuing to make vaccines against new variants as they emerge, so they're available should they be necessary. And then the scientific community. Has got much better treatments now, so that's the other thing that's changed from the beginning of 2020 to now. We understand the disease a lot better, and therefore getting treatments out to people that are affected because they haven't been able to get a vaccine yet, or because they're immune compromised, changes the way that we'll deal with this disease going forwards. Once we get global vaccination equity, because we need to get still vaccines to quite a lot of the world, and then we just have to wait and see. But we're much more prepared now than we were. 2020, because we understand the disease better, I think. But also, the widespread use of vaccines, which is increasing everywhere in the world, means that when people get infected now, they're much less likely to need to go to hospital for treatment or to to die from the disease. So we've really seen a massive drop off in the number of hospitalizations、um, and the number of deaths from the disease. Even though there are still quite a lot of、um, cases, we're seeing more mild cases. Uh, people not suffering nearly as much, so it's still something that we have to to keep an eye on. But really, the use of vaccines has changed things from where we were in 2020, and we're in a very different situation now. What we really wanted to do when we wrote the book was to counter some of the things that we were hearing from the public and their concerns about the vaccine development. So two things that we heard a lot was we don't know what's in the vaccine, we don't understand it, and it's happened too fast. And we know exactly what's in the vaccine because we designed it and we produced it, and then we then went on and tested it and we verified that it was exactly what it should be and that there were no errors,、um, and that we really fully understand what's there and how it works. And we also went through all of the normal processes that we would go through in getting approvals to manufacture the vaccine、uh, for clinical trials, to start those clinical trials. All of the clinical trials will run to the usual regulatory procedures. We just did everything with no gaps, so we were able to work very efficiently with a large team.、Um, and that was really what we wanted to put over to people. It's been left in past to companies to decide if they want to go and make a vaccine, and companies、um, have a duty to make money for their shareholders. And many vaccines would not make very large amounts of money if you're going to make vaccines against diseases which may never cause another outbreak.、Um, then you're putting quite a lot of money at risk there. But we know that by working together. 
um, working with academics and companies together, we can share that burden and we can make the whole process much more efficient. We've seen that also with the development of what we call platform technologies in the pandemic. You understand that for the platform technology and that saves you a lot of time in having to do it again for every disease you want to make a vaccine against. So I hope that we'll see more collaboration in the future between um, academic research groups and companies who are then able to take on the very large scale manufacturing of vaccines when needed. Well, I think there was perhaps some confusion at the beginning with the early phase clinical trial data. And that came about because I mean, clinical trials are, are very complicated things to report, particularly when you're setting them up during an ongoing pandemic situation um, and trying to respond in a, an evolving situation where things didn't stay static from one day to the next. And perhaps it's always been our intention and our mission to all the data that we get out there truthfully because we're scientists and we're academics and and our mission is to to tell the truth and get all of the facts which we uncover during our scientific research available to the public but when we look in real world situations you can see that all of the vaccines that we have now are being extremely effective at presenting hospitalization and death well we also have to remember that although um there may be some genuine differences in efficacy between different vaccines people didn't have the opportunity to choose which vaccine they could receive. There was often only one type of vaccine available in a country at any one time. And we know, for example, that the vaccines made from inactivated virus have a lesser efficacy than either the adenovector vaccines or the RNA vaccines. But in some countries, those were the vaccines that were available and those vaccines have saved a lot of lives. And now, um, the immunity from those is waning somewhat, and so it's necessary to give a booster dose, and it might not be the same vaccine that was given the first time round. But now there are more doses available of more different vaccines. I think it's really important that we did learn that, and we do remember that there is something fundamental about how we can behave in society. Not everybody is selfish. And when things get difficult, we can come together as, as, as teams to support each other. I think we've learned that and we must base, base our decision making in the future on that truth. I think it's true. And we should remember that people are good. I'm an optimist. so. <laughs> yeah, I'm an optimist too. And I agree with Kath. I mean, collaboration in so, it was important in so many different ways. Um, we, we have to work together and we can overcome very difficult things when we do.